It's an interesting track, Portimao. I think it, you know, they developed it and built it initially back in 2007, eight, I think, to be a Formula One race venue. Uh, obviously, a lot of teams went there to test, in fact. So I, I believe people like Lewis, even George Russell has been there with Mercedes um, three or four years ago. Uh, so I think actually a lot of drivers have raced in junior formula. I think certainly people like Leclerc and Verstappen have been there in Formula 3. So it's it's been a venue that most people have been to for testing, if not for racing. But uh, yeah, first time there in Formula 1. I think it'll be it'll be interesting. You know, it's a real roller coaster, very undulating. It's got a lot of uh, blind crests and blind corners. I think the, the curbs are quite flat. So we're going to see the uh, the standard issue of track limits coming up for discussion, unfortunately. Um, not a huge deal of overtaking opportunities. There's a, there's a couple of, you know, places where you can have a bit of a lunch. But I think because of the, um, you know, all of these blind corners and, and the fact that one corner leads to another, there's actually multiple lines and, and options that pe- drivers can use. So we will, we will see the odd error. And, and I think, you know, if people make one mistake, it'll lead to the next corner and the next corner, and the next corner. So I think it will be, it'll be one of those races where it'll be quite easy to make a mistake, particularly because the track's quite bumpy as well. The final corner of the track should be comfortably flat out, even in the race with, with high fuel. So actually you're accelerating all the way from 14. Um, and, and the start finish rate, you sort of go, you go downhill initially then you climb back when you come out of 15 you go down then it comes back up across the finish line and then again drops quite steeply down before you commit to the first corner so the first corner is going to be very very quick i'd say in terms of radius it's somewhat reminiscent to the first corner at hockenheim so nowadays i think it's a sixth gear sometimes seventh gear corner even in qualifying so a very very quick short sharp apex um you know i think that the yeah, if you got DRS and you got the move done on somebody, you're going to have to make sure you're cleanly in front of them because it's not a big braking zone um, for you to outbreak another driver. But one big factor, Peter, at Podima is the wind. The track itself is based on a hill, um, you know, slightly inland from the sea. But because it's on the top of the hill, it's quite exposed and you get a lot of the wind, especially in the afternoon, the wind really picks up. And that makes it um, pretty challenging for the cars in the afternoons around there. Turn three is, is a fairly standard hairpin. But it, what's important is you've got to remember to bring the car back across because you've got an uphill left-hander. Um, and if you exit too far across on the left-hand side, then, then you compromise your exit. You know, the left-hander at four should be flat out, provided you bring the line back. So it's one of those corners, I think, where we'll see, we'll see drivers using multiple lines. It is normally or historically was a very bumpy braking zone into turn five. But what's happened is in recent times, um, especially this year, they've resurfaced the track. So I think it's only been done in the last few months. And what uh, I read some comments online, MotoGP went there for a test and they were talking about how the new surface is very abrasive, um, but still actually got some bumps. You know, the riders were all a lot of them on production bikes so weren't as stiff as the, the regular MotoGP bikes. But they were already talking about how um, the bumps, you know, they they could feel it even despite the new surface. So I'll be interested to see how the Grand Prix cars handle that. T- turn seven and eight is um, it's sort of one long braking and turning corner, really. You know, they're, they're going to be committing into the apex of seven flat, uh, and then braking just as you you open up the wheel and get the the nose turned in for for turn eight. So. It's going to be important to just try and take a slightly wider line at seven to set yourself up and have a little bit less steering lock as you break in turn for eight. But it climbs very steeply on the exit of eight. So you always have a bit of exit oversteer because of the way the, the ground um, starts to, to go upwards. So um, it, it's a very tricky corner because I, I think it's also one of the higher points of the track. And certainly if the wind comes um, in, a, in a direction where you're, where you're going to be directly affected under braking, I think it could be one of the trickiest corners. You, know, you go up the hill out of eight and then you drop down through a flat out left-hander at nine and then you're climbing back up for the double right. That's, I think that bit is, you know, is all, it's, a, it's probably steeper, I'd say, in terms of percentage terms than Paddock Hill Bend even. You know, it's really, really steep. Um, some of it reminds me of, um, you know, circuits like Alton Park where, you got blind apexes. It's it's narrower than you think. 
um, and, and it really means you've got to be confident and on top of the car. The last part is, it's, it's a funny one because you've got multiple lines for especially 13, 14. Um, you know, again, one leads into the other. Uh, and 14, you're really waiting on the front. Um, it's sort of like Budapest, the last corner, uh, or maybe even a little bit like turn two in Budapest, where, where you're just waiting on the front end to bite. Um, and, and you're really, it's a bit of a frustrating corner because you know the earlier you commit to the throttle, it's going to win you lap time all the way around um, up to turn one. Because as I said before, turn 15 is flat. So... Yeah, it's a con. It, I think on the whole, it's a circuit that will reward braking stability, but also a very good front end if, if you can have it in the medium slow speed. The curbs around Portimao are going to be pretty flat because MotoGP are racing there. They've got their final round of the championship, I believe, um, there later this year, but they've been out testing. It's quite a popular track for bikes anyway on track day. So because the curbs are flat, we're going to have the uh, the standard arguments about track limits, I suspect. Um, not Not necessarily at all the corners. I'd say turn four, turn one, of course, I think for the high speed will be an issue. Um, but there won't be too many others where track limits will, will actually be too much of a problem. I, I raced for a Portuguese team in 2009, Ocean Racing Technology, owned by Tiago Monteiro, of course, former Grand Prix driver, uh, who's still a great friend of mine. Uh, so I did 19 trips down to, to the Algarve in that one year because I used to go on the Wednesday after every race for a, for a debrief and stuff. Um, it's a lovely part of the world, you know, you can fly into Faro and then I think it was only about 40 odd minutes, 40, 45 minutes to the circuit. Um, and it's a, it's, you know, you've got Portimao, you've got Lagos, you've got uh, Villa Mora, there's some lovely towns along the waterfront. Obviously with COVID, I, I imagine there's going to be certain restrictions on, you know, where people can go, which is a shame because... It is, um, you know, normally it's a, it's a lovely part to go to. And actually the circuit themselves have got great facilities. I think it's the only track I can think of with a swimming pool in the paddock. Um, but also uh, the, um, there's a 4 by 4 track. They've got some buggies out there and it's a really fun 4 by 4 track. I remember having a go on that uh, a few years ago when I went for a, a corporate event out there. And it's a fantastic venue. It's got a great track. I think they've hosted the World Championship or the European Championships there as well. A good car track. So, yeah, all in all, uh, a very cool venue. I heard about you long before we met. You're winsome and you're young. At least that's what they said. Underneath your glitter and your gold.